But today, at a minute past eight, we're getting straight down to business and we're starting with a very special edition of The Beef Is Real. Well, I don't like them. And I don't have to work with people I don't like. Patrick Vera is six foot four. So I'm going to go Gary Neville. He says, come and have a go at me. You should have gone to Specsavers, Charlie. Well, maybe you should go also then, Jeff, because uh, you couldn't see driving home the other night. Don't you ever talk about me! So I think your argument's back and forward there, Tony. That's the point. I'm wondering... Wait, just let me finish. Let me finish. I'm let you finish. You can't at all. You can forget about Sean Kavanagh as far as he's a man. If, if you're going to be critical, then you've got to make sure you've got something to back it up with, don't you? Maybe the coaches were maybe panicking a little bit. To me, you've got to have a, a little bit of a better record than that. The beef is real. <laughs> In the green corner, today we're talking about uh, Croke Park versus the other green corner, the acting CMO, the National Public Health Emergency Team's leader, Ronan Glynn. So by now you'll be familiar with what happened. Yesterday, a very long cabinet meeting, which apparently was slightly fractious, and after that there was a press conference. I gave the press conference about a three out of ten, and perhaps I was being a little bit generous to... Uh, maybe I just counted the people who were up on uh, stage at the start. Um, my favourite bit of the press conference actually was the... Um, person signing in the background whenever uh, Michal Martin talked about the number of cases increasing, the guy doing the sign language just went like that. It's like, <laughs> it like, oh, oh. And my five-year-old went, did you see what he did? Did you see what he did? <laughs> and she went, I was like, yes. Yeah. So seems to be uh, certainly the, the general mood on this, right? So anyway, um, I digress momentarily. New guidelines around public health, sweeping announcements about over 70s, essentially going back to cocooning again. Only go to the shop at designated times. Limit the amount of uh, hours you have outside of the house. I mean, you know, this is exactly what everybody was doing in the first place. Uh, wear masks wherever you, you meet people. Avoid all public transport, that's a, a general thing. Work from home if you possibly can. Family gatherings limited to six people. All outdoor gatherings to 15 people. Obviously, we're two weeks away from the schools reopening, and if that goes badly, then it is going to set the whole country back months and months and months. So there's a bit of a, a tightrope being walked at the moment, and again, they pointed out to the massive spikes that we've seen. The rolling average is, is awful. There was 190-odd cases. There was 200 on Saturday. So uh, a fairly grim picture being painted. That's the government's case. They obviously mentioned uh, the numpties in Berlin and the bait party where, uh, as I said, a bunch of numpties pretending they were a burning man. But Michal Martin didn't actually mention in his speech part, he didn't mention direct provision and he didn't mention the meat factories. Uh, obviously, he answered questions about it. And, um, but the clear intention was to put in the public's mind that the responsibility for what's happening is essentially with house parties. And then there was also this bombshell thrown in the middle of it, which was, all sport is going behind closed doors. The notion that um, the 200 spectators were going to go to 500 and eventually increase again was going to be something that um, that was torpedoed. No, no chance of that. So spectators, no. All sport behind closed doors and even uh, unclear about whether or not we were going to be able to uh, drop kids off to matches and stay to watch them. So all of a sudden underage sport is, um, is in danger as well. It has to be said that the government momentarily united all of the sports fans and attendees in the country for a couple of hours last night when everybody was united in what the hell is going on here? Why is this happening? Ronan Glynn did say that um, there was some evidence that suggested that people sharing cars to go to games was actually resulting in cases. After that, uh, a few statements were issued. The FAI came out with a fairly detailed statement saying this is what's going to happen at all ages and all uh, age groups and all levels of football in the country. Um, and they said that they would continue to uh, stay abreast of the situation and uh, keep in touch with the government. So clearly they'd, they'd spoken and, and clarified some things. The GEA statement dropped last night. And I'm going to read the full thing because it's short. Following this evening's unexpected announcement, the GEA invites Dr. Ronan Glynn and Neffet to present the empirical evidence which informed the requirement for the association to curtail its activities. The association will tonight be issuing an invitation to Dr. Glynn to meet with its COVID advisory group in this regard without delay. The GA and its members remain at all times committed to protecting public health. Communication ends. Dr. Glynn apparently is a member of the GA own, but the beef is real. The beef is very real here. So what we tend to do in the beef is real, we tend to go back and actually figure out 
how early the battle lines have been drawn. But the beef is real gets very interesting whenever the battle lines weren't drawn in the past at all, when they were actually on the same side on things in the not so distant past. Now, I accept that three months is a hell of a long time in the year 2020, but let us go back a little bit to May of this year. We all remember John Horan appearing on the Sunday game in May. And here is what he told Des Cahill that night about how the GEA are making their decisions. We're taking our advice predominantly from Neffet and the information that they're giving out to us, but we're also setting up our own advisory group within the organisation and we'd hope that they will in time link in with Neffet and get a roadmap approved by them, created by us, to actually get a proper return to play and use of our facilities. Now, let's also hear from John Horne talking about the prospect of playing games behind closed doors, because, of course, what's actually been uh, lost a little bit in the, the mire of yesterday, that is just the line from the government. The line is that no sport behind closed doors. That's it. I think, I think maybe we're getting uh, mixed up in this idea that all sport has been cancelled and, uh, and a sport has been called off. That's not the case. It's just no fans at games. That is essentially the bottom line. No sport Here's John behind Horne. closed doors, yeah. Yeah, so, so he, here's what Horan said about the, the prospect of playing, say, a championship behind closed doors back in May. You'd get some revenue streams if you went behind closed doors, but like, I, I still go back to the point. I think, you know, if there's contact sport yeah. on the pitch and such is the size of our facilities. Like, I mean, if you had a crowd of 20,000 in Crow Park, I think it would be lost and everybody yeah. would be comfortably social distancing. So, but ethically, are you against the notion almost of, not ethically, but... The core of GA Championship it does have crowds. Uh, are you are you basically against them in your own view? A game with no crowd there. Well, I, I I don't think it's I don't think it's going to happen to be honest with you because I think if the games are on the pitch, there's going to be a certain acceptance that there's going to be a crowd in the actual yeah. stadium, and I and I think that's where it's going to rest. Just but just before you come in there, Jared, like that's a very interesting philosophical standpoint that the GA have seemingly stuck by, and this idea that they will not be happy with a behind-closed-doors championship. Even back in May, was a little bit eyebrow-raising. We'd become accustomed to the idea that the Premier League was about to come back, the Bundesliga was about to come back, but all behind closed doors. It felt ambitious that the GEA were looking at a championship behind closed doors. Yesterday kind of forced them into this position. Do they stick to their guns and actually really go for this getting crowds at games scenario? They have. It has meant, though, that they have had to turn on Neffet a little bit, and they are no longer going to bow down to the word of Neffet unconditionally. They are now coming out swinging and saying to them, show us your evidence. They have literally said to a scientist, show me your science. Um, well, come, come, come over to us urgently and explain to us and our committee what's going on. Um, there's been, a, it's been an interesting reaction. I think the GEA community have rallied behind the GEA. The scientific community are going, he's a bit busy, lads. There's a global pandemic on. And he's a bit busy. Uh, Philip Nolan was um, uh, tweeting, he's obviously from Maynooth, he's part of Neffet. It, again, sometimes it is actually hard to know who is on Neffet and, and what the relationship between Neffet and the government in this instance is. Mm. So they're advisors. The government make the decision. It's funny that they're calling out Ronan Glynn and heaping all the pressure on him as an individual in that statement. You know, it's like, it's certainly megaphone diplomacy. It's not the, let's bring him up and go, here, could you explain to us what happened there? We're like, you know, we're, we're a bit lost because we didn't get any information. Or maybe, you know, ring the Taoiseach's office and go, what happened? It, it, it heaps a whole lot of pressure on the CMO. And, why we're, you know, the beef is real, it's supposed to be a bit of crack. It's like they've, they've decided that this is a very public battle between them and the acting CMO, which is an unusual situation for a sports body to find itself in. It, it is. It, like, I, I, I'll, I'll give you that. Like, I mean, they the used to say that the, the three pillars of Irish society were the GEA, the Catholic Church and Fianna Fáil. But by asking for empirical evidence last night, they've clearly killed off the Catholic Church and by turning their back on the public health guidelines, uh, they are clearly trying to kill off Fianna Fáil as well and trying to become the last pillar standing in Irish society. I was, was like you say, it was the, the GA community who rallied behind this uh, statement last night. To be honest with you, when I saw it, I was like, fair play. I kind of thought to myself, this is actually a ballsy move. Uh, like I, I tweeted last night saying, Troy Deeney would be proud of the cojones shown by the GA. 
Uh, like, and I kind of stand by that this morning. I don't really see how you can be too critical of what the GEA have done here, that they have been in a position over the last couple of weeks where a lot of high-profile GEA figures have been quite annoyed by the restrictions pe- placed on crowds. Now, personally, I disagree with that. I disagree with the idea that, you know, that, uh, that they should be trying to be a runaway train here and trying to increase people at matches. I think you should be happy with what you've got. But at the same time, that is where they've been, and you can sympathise with their position to a point. And you can sympathise with their position where your current process has actually been downscaled and downgraded, and you're going to have less people at matches to the point where you're going to have no people at matches. And you see Ronan Glynn come out and making comments about, you know, if you've got 30 people at matches plus a crowd, you'll have 230, 250 people. And I know it's only a small detail, and he's a busy man, as you say, he's the busiest man in the country uh, at the moment, no doubt. But that sends an alarm bell off in the GEA, I'd imagine, where it's like, hang on a minute, you've just made the same mistake that Michal Martin made last week. It's a small detail, but details are kind of important at the moment. How much do you actually understand what's going on here? Can you actually present to us what you base this on? You have mentioned, sure, that there is evidence that uh, it, it, there is actual transmissions happening in transport to games. There is no reason whatsoever for him to make that up. I'm sure that that is the case. So let's assume that's all, true. All, is that, all, not, is that not the end of the argument, yeah. though? Is that not the end of it? It's like, unfortunately, we've discovered this thing that's happening. Like, all of the stuff that you're... And all of the arguments that people are making about the big venues, even the, the John Horan point about the 20,000, it was never the 20,000 sitting in the stadium. It was how people are getting there beforehand. It was how people are getting out afterwards. And the fact that, like... We all know, if we, we've all been in situations over the last couple of months where you meet somebody and you sit and you have a coffee and like suddenly at a match, a team meets. Like we know that there are club teams in all sports going for drinks outdoors maybe, or maybe they're having parties. And like my issue here is that it's not actually a GAA issue. They feel like they are somehow being targeted, but that's not the case. Like, I actually don't think that the government produced a, a fully thought out plan yesterday. There was no coherency. The performance of the Taoiseach and the health minister and Eamon Ryan in the press conference was abysmal. It gave me no confidence mm-hmm. that they were in charge of their briefs and that they had thought through the, uh, a consistent plan, given that this has been coming for ages. And given that the schools, like where's the, where's the Minister for Education? We are two and a half weeks away from a million kids going back to school sight nor sound of her at any point in all this. So that's where people, I think, have no faith in it. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, you know, the the GA are not being targeted separately. This is like the same for the FAI and it's the same for the IRFU and it's the same for everybody. Just just on that, sure. So who cares? Like if if the GA get their empirical evidence, that they're looking for, they actually get the explanation, then that explanation goes for the IRFU or the FAI or all the other sporting bodies. It doesn't matter that they're acting self in a self-interested way. The result of them getting that evidence that they appear to be lacking at the moment will actually apply to everybody. So this is a, a sport-wide conversation. If they get that conversation and that sit-down meeting with Ronan Glynn and get the evidence that they're after, then that's the FAI and the IRFU. They, they will have to, the, the same evidence available to them as well. So the issue is a sport-wide problem. The GEA are obviously acting uh, for themselves. So I, I don't necessarily agree that this is uh, this is necessarily going to be kind of uh, uh, something that isn't a one-size-fits-all approach. Like, uh, And then your other point on potentially players going for drinks after games and celebrating after a big championship win, like that's still going to happen. Like, If, if you're put, pointing the finger at players and, and how they're congregating a, a, around games, that's not going to change. The games can still happen at, at, at elite level. Uh, like, We're seeing some juvenile games called off this week. We don't have clarity on that. I don't know. I, I think that the GEA are well within their rights to come out and say, hold on a minute. Can, can we actually just get a breakdown here, as, he, as they said, the empirical evidence of why this is dangerous, or, or of how exactly people are, are uh, traveling to games and what the exact number of cases that have actually come out of that are? Because we don't have a, we don't have a number on that. And so, like, summoning, that, the, summoning the CMO, summoning the CMO publicly like that and putting all that pressure on him when actually it's the government to make that decision. Is that the right course of action? Like, it's certainly what I would say on that is that the GA need to be careful that they're going to need government funding this year, that uh, their gate receipts are going to be massively down, and if they want to run a GEA championship, they are going to need government funding. So I will say that they need to be careful on that front. But at the same time, they are well within their rights to say, 
how many cases have we as an organization inadvertently caused by the fact that our games are happening? And they don't have that number, Jerry. Like they, that but, is but you can't, but you can't, number. so like that, that's the bit where it's like, are we going to have like, um, are we going to mark people with stars and say, okay, your, your organization is okay because you have produced, but this organization over here hasn't. Like it, if, if, if three people share a car to go and watch a movie, that's the wrong thing to do. But like, you can't, you can't check every car and go, are you going to a GA match? Are you going to, like, th that's the bit where it's, it's, it's overall, the figures in the country are going, I don't actually agree with the plan on. I don't think that the, the I don't yeah, actually no. think that the, the government have got a hold of this at all at the moment. Like even the, the, point is not a communication the contact the tracing is, yeah, look, that's it. Look, we, we need to move on because, um, what are we at, 17 minutes past eight here. The beef is real. That's uh, today's version of it.